Hi, so to introduce myself, uh, firstly, I'm a Doha Debates consultant. And uh, other than that, um, I do advocacy work. I've been doing it since I'm 14 years old. I'm 22 right now. So I have, and uh, my advocacy work has received international awards for it to advocate specifically on, I focus on education, but I try to focus on other subjects too, as they play a very vital role. So how does disability rights come into climate advocacy, right? Something we might all be wondering. Actually, to be honest, I wondered that too. I had no idea until last year, right? I was like, how do these two things uh, bump in? So I wanna, now what I learned, I wanna share it with you. So to start with disability, disability is such an underrepresented topic. It's a worldwide issue. It's just underrepresented in every topic, whether it's education, health rights, or even uh, daily, your right to work, right? It's a very underrepresented topic. So I want to start with the basics. Because I think when you learn the basics of disability, um, it can help you give a picture, right? It helps you understand about the community, how big it is. So I want to share that people with disabilities are the 15% population of the world. And firstly, yes, it's 15%. I saw that look on your face, it's 15%. And no, and no, disability is not just wheelchair. Uh, there's people that are blind, people that are deaf, people with intellectual disabilities, um, and people with even invisible disabilities. Someone in the crowd might have an invisible disability, and you don't know it at all because you can't see it, right? So all of these experiences are not the same. I don't know what a blind person goes through. A blind person does not know what I go through either. So we all have different experiences. And no, not everyone experiences disability the same way. It depends on your gender, your nationality, your economic status. All of these three things play a very big role Yes, we might all have different types of disabilities, but we might not experience it the same way. I think specifically the economic part and the nationality part plays a very big role on how you might experience disability and how far you would go uh, in your life. Now to include this, let me just have a turn. So, to, um, yes, so one of the big things I wanted to highlight also that it is part of the SDG goals. Sustainable development uh, makes it sure that disability rights are integral. You cannot reach a green, sustainable world without people with disabilities included. So as I was saying, 15% of the population, um, this includes 93 million children that have some type of disability. And 72 million uh, adults in the world, uh, again, has some type of functioning uh, disability. So, I need to know that people with disabilities are increasing. Yes, this is due to climate disasters, this is due to wars and conflicts going on in the world, and because of climate change, and also, you know these working industries, right? Uh, we know that there's different working industries that are very tough on the health, um, and specifically also, um, the location plays a big role too, which increases the chance of people having a disability, which is increasing, right? So, uh, how now to explain about the climate, oh, that how is the climate, climate uh, crisis is a part of the disability issue? Firstly, um, we know that people will be displaced. Now, 18 million people with disabilities will be displaced by somewhere by 2050. This is 18 million people. You need to understand that these 18 million people are part of the economy, and they're gonna be in different hosting countries by that time. People with disabilities contribute to the economy in different ways. So when, if they are displaced, they're not able, they're not able to be active, which does have a, a big impact on the country's GDP, a country's growth and innovation. So it's a big part of our future. So, we are the most underrepresented in the climate conversation, yet we are deeply impacted by it. So when climate disasters happen, there has been a big issue that the evacuation centers were not accessible. 
uh, countries, when they were creating disaster plans and management, people with disabilities were not included in those plans. And this is a big issue because how would someone with a disability escape during a flooding, right? If a flooding happens, how would I escape? If a fire happens, how do I get out of a building? The, and these things are not mentioned in plans. We'll be very surprised, but a lot of countries and governments, when they're having these conversations, people with disabilities are not in the room, right? Yet we're the, we're the community that's deeply impacted by it. So, and because of this, now, have you seen some countries have their cities that are completely flooded, flooded out and wiped because of the growing, uh, uh, growing uh, uh, disasters happening and flooding that completely wipes out certain areas, right? And what, what, ha what is this creating? These are creating climate refugees. Climate refugees is a term for people that have been displaced because their entire cities or areas are completely wiped out because of the flooding, right? So these people are essentially climate refugees. Um, to increase that people with disabilities, when they are, when they are being uh, displaced, one of, the, one of the big issues that has been occurring during these displacements, that these people end up with a, they end up with a disability either um, because of result of a flooding or because they're diseases, right? When a climate disaster happens in a country, it, it essentially like a pandemic, right? It might uh, cause certain bacteria that would lead the person to have a health issue, which results to a disability. Um, and this has been proven that a lot of children, when they were displaced in between, they ended up receiving a disability. Either one died, and one in three children would either die, or end up with a, end up with a disability uh, because of it. Now to bring in that a lot, of the uh, all, a lot of refugees that have been moving around countries uh, to call for a better home uh, ended up having some type of disability. A lot of the hosting countries have been very generous enough to take care of people, but the pressure is still there, right? There's the identity that plays in. When you're a refugee, you have a disability, and you're displaced, these they have their own type of experiences, and they see that the harshest. And um, something to bring in that people with disabilities end up not uh, not receiving adequate health care. So a uh, people uh, so uh, sorry. Let me try to view. So one of the things to bring in that the healthcare system still has a long way to go. Um, whenever people with disabilities are talked about with the healthcare system, it's on a point of that they're a burden. Now, the data proves that when people with disabilities um, are contributing and are given the tools they need, they're more likely to be independent, thus providing for themselves, which is less likely to burden the healthcare system and charity system because when people with disabilities are able to be economically independent, even if they're a refugee, right? If you give uh, people with disabilities, and especially uh, refugees with disabilities, jobs that they are able to do, even in their host country, they would be independently providing for themselves, thus less likely needing charity organizations or government funding, because they're able to uh, independently contribute. So we know all this information. We know hosting countries have millions of people with disabilities uh, in there, right? We know that uh, disasters, uh, climate disasters specifically, will create more people with disabilities, right? What is the solution? What do you do first? When we talk about any community, we need to include them on the table in the first place, right? When we talk about women's rights, we want women on the table first. So a community can better tell you the solutions that they need, right? When you bring disability expertise, lawmakers, um, specifically, why I say specifically people with disabilities? Because firstly, they come from that professional law background and they can accurately tell you what people with disabilities need. So it's very important that when we're having conversations about the climate crisis, 
we include people with disabilities. We cannot reach the sustainable development goals. A greener world, a more inclusive world, is where we have better economies, we have better, we have better representation system, which leads to more innovation and less human rights abuses. So um, I wanted to, like, to, I, I know these numbers are huge. I know we're, what we're seeing on the screen uh, are the numbers by the World Health Organization. So right now, more than one, uh, one million people need at least one type of assistive device. Assistive devices can be anything. They can be your glasses, they can be your contact lens. So yes, these things are assistive devices. They help you live your life more easily. Um, and one of the things that these assistive devices can be built more sustainably, right? Uh, because when we make more sustainable, durable devices, they're able to survive flooding or a breakage. So this is a one, one of the big issues that when floods happen or even disasters happen, equipment that is used by people with disabilities gets destroyed. This is a very big issue that happens that hinders the independence of uh, a person with a disability, regardless if they need glasses, they need a cane, they need a wheelchair, depends on what their need is. Um, one of the things that I did want to break through, as you can see with a photo here, um, that uh, photo here, that peer support is very important. When these disasters happen, if a person with a disability uh, has a companion or a family member that passes away during uh, resulting, uh, resulting uh, a flood or a disaster, they lose that uh, support. Peer support is very important because if, if so, how do we make sure that when we're making systems, uh, disaster management, uh, that people, that we make sure that countries and their evacuation systems make sure that there is a system in place that when a disaster happens, when uh, disaster, when a disaster happens, that people with disabilities, in case their peer support passes away because of a uh, because a result of a disaster, how will they manage their life? Um, and also evacuation systems to be made more accessibly. So if someone is deaf and they cannot hear a system to make sure there are uh, ways that the government can reach their people uh, to alert them. Uh, this is very important. Every country should have in their alert system different ways. How can they reach a blind person? How can they reach someone that's deaf or someone that even has an intellectual disability? How to make sure they know that this warning system is in place? So, um, so we have talked about different, um, uh, different uh, devi tech devices uh, that is there and the economic contribution that, that gets hindered when these devices are broken. Now, um, let's, to the positive note, right? So ad assistive devices change lives. So when a person with a disability has a wheelchair provided, they're more likely to be able to um, go to school, study, thus, um, in, uh, thus improving the economic contribution. Um, now, with, um, one of the things I wanted to put in place that um, that hearing devices don't work for all deaf people. So sign language is still vital. It is very important that sign language uh, um, teaching is provided. Hearing devices, they, they do work. It's great for a child to have it, but they don't work for everyone. So it depends case to case, but it does play, still play a big role because it can also help the elderly. So, um, so you know, the main conclusion that I wanted to bring in that when we are having any conversation to include people with disabilities in it, people with disabilities will have the most severe impact because of the climate crisis on their health, on their safety, on their ability to equally contribute, will be most hindered, yet they're the least represented one in these global conversations. So we need to make sure governments include law professionals with disabilities and make sure they have them 
from the beginning of every climate crisis conversation that is going on right now. They are still the most underrepresented one in the topic, and they will deal with the harshest consequences of it. So thank you, everyone. Um, I wanted to end on this note that disability rights are human rights. And let's make sure that, make sure that your government is including people with disabilities in the climate crisis conversation. Thank you.